Today was All Saints Day, which is a national holiday in Poland, celebrated on November 1st every year. The saints, on the one hand, are there to inspire us in the pursuit of goodness and to deepen the layers of nobility and mercy within us. And on the other hand, they are intercessors who intercede for us to God. The Church today remembers all the faithful who have achieved salvation after death, both those canonized and those who have not been formally recognized as saints. It reminds us that every believer has a calling to holiness. Saints serve as an example and model for us. For example, the Olma family, Father Popiewuszko or Prelat Wyszyński, everyone has their beloved saints, and it is good for us to go through life with their support, so that we can also join the ranks of the saints ourselves. On All Saints Day, the faithful in Poland also visit the graves of their loved ones. This is the kind of day when one thinks very much about their loved ones who have passed away. We would very much like this kind of remembrance to stay for eternity. The candles and flowers we leave on the graves are a symbol of our love, memory and hope. As a mother, I would like to introduce my children to the family, our ancestry, and to explain how important it is who our ancestors were and how much it matters and influences who we are now. When we think of the graves of loved ones, we think of the graves of those closest to us, but also those who are close to our hearts, by what they were like and what they did. We visit loved ones, we visit family graves, but we also light candles for those who have been forgotten. All Saints Day on November 1st is one of the oldest holidays celebrated in the Catholic Church. All Saints Day has its roots in antiquity, when the first Christians celebrated the memory of all the martyrs together, and later in the Middle Ages, in the 10th century, the Pope established this Day of All Saints for the whole Church. Every year at cemeteries across Poland, but also abroad, fundraisers are organized to save historic gravestones. This is the oldest cemetery in Zakopane. This is also where volunteers hold fundraisers. Now I see that the monument, which has already been conserved twice, the monument to the victims of the patriotic demonstration in Warsaw and Vilnius, has again become coated with some algae, dirt, and needs to be refreshed. On All Saints Day, we remember loved ones who are no longer among us, but it's also a moment of reflection about how fragile life truly is. German President Frank Walter Steinmeier asked for forgiveness for war crimes committed by Germany's Third Reich during a visit to Greece. Authorities in Greece reminded him of reparation demands, but here the German president responds briefly. No, we will not pay. Greece demands 400 billion euros. They are demanding repayment of the loan Hitler took out from Greece before the war, but they are also demanding compensation for war damage, as Greece was also a country that suffered great material and human losses during the war operations, as well as the pacification of villages. Germany not only considers the topic of reparations closed, their historical policy for several decades has been striving for Germany to to be seen as a victim of the war, hence content such as that published in the Frankfurter Allgemeine Zeitung. The expulsion and murder of millions of Germans, air raids against civilians, the mistreatment of prisoners of war, and the loss of a quarter of the country's territory. These, too, are difficult to put into numbers. This is a consequence of the narrative created in Germany, while the facts are quite different. It was the Germans who attacked Poland on the 1st of September, 1939. We as citizens of the Second Republic of Poland were undoubtedly not only the first victim, but also a victim who gave a tribute of blood until the last day of the war. Because the people of Poland fought against the Germans on all fronts of the world, today we demand reparations for the evil done and unaccounted for crimes, murders and looting. On September 1, 2022, a report on the losses suffered by Poland during World War II was presented at the Royal Castle in Warsaw. A team led by Arkadiusz Mularczyk calculated the reparations owed to Poland by Germany at more than 6 trillion Polish złote. We cannot allow ourselves to be pushed into this narrative, which the Germans are carrying out for internal and external use, that they were the same victims of the Nazis as other victims of World War II. The fact that 
Polish people expect reparations is confirmed by opinion polls. However, one is surprised by the attitude of the Polish Prime Minister, who said on the 2nd of July that Poland had renounced reparations. The words were said in the presence of the German Chancellor, and on top of that, in Warsaw, a city that the Germans raised to the ground, mass murdering the capital's population. And Chancellor Scholz also says openly, and this is the advantage of this meeting, that in a formal and legal sense, the reparations from Germany's point of view are closed. And when Republika's journalist asks about the reparations issue, I think this is not the time or place for Polish-German accounting. The answer, to put it mildly, evasive. However, the closer we get to the presidential election, politicians who want to convince voters may change their minds. We see this kind of cozying up to the conservative Catholic electorate. Even Rafał Trzaskowski said yesterday that he didn't take down any crosses. During World War II, more than 5 million Poles lost their lives, and human life has no price. Over 200 people have lost their lives as a result of the floods in Spain. The search for missing people continues. At the same time, residents are cleaning up homes and streets. Meteorologists are forecasting more rainfall. Thousands of volunteers from all over Spain, armed with shovels, spades, brooms and buckets, are heading to the most affected areas. We're going to help where we're needed. Every possible help is needed. There is no more I can do. There are many apartments that need to be cleaned. The largest number of casualties is in the town of Paiporta, with a population of 25,000, where more than 60 residents were killed. I feel happy because I am alive, while many people have died. I know that people are looking for their loved ones, and I realize the pain they are feeling. This was the third flood after 2018 and 2020. It was terrifying. We found ourselves trapped. There was water in front of us and we couldn't go under the bridge from there and we saw that the water was behind us. Then we started running. People accuse authorities of allowing residential buildings to be built in flood zones. My wife and I don't want to live here anymore. This is some kind of nightmare. Governments never have any idea what to do. No matter how many times they promise to help us, it's always too little and comes too late. Spanish Army Territorial Defense units have joined the rescue effort, checking buildings and searching underground parking lots. It is already clear that Spaniards are facing the most tragic flood in their country's modern history, and one of the worst in European history. Three states, hundreds of kilometers, thousands of voters, and all in one evening. Donald Trump visited the people of Nevada, Arizona, and New Mexico to remind his compatriots what's really at stake. At stake is the economy, the security of American families, and the borders. The United States is now an occupied country. Can you believe I have to say that? The United States, we're an occupied country. They're coming in, and they're by the thousands, and they have equipment that's military-grade equipment. How do they get that? They have military-grade equipment. But it will soon be an occupied country, no longer. November 5th, 2024 will be Liberation Day in America. The Republican presidential candidate is promising mass deportations and support, not for illegal immigrants, but for American families who have felt the effects of democratic rule firsthand over the past four years, unemployment, inflation, failing industries, and declining security. Young voters also recognize this. Trump has a really good chance of winning here. Just He has a lot of views that align with people I know that live here. Um, I know a lot of people that are really torn up about the way the economy is right now, just rent prices and you know costs for everyday stuff that's just risen over and over again over the past few years. The closer we get to the decisive day, the more supporters and votes Trump gains. Trump fried French fries and served takeout food at a McDonald's restaurant, drawing attention to the lie of Kamala Harris, who asserted that she worked at this fast food chain in college. 
and when President Joe Biden recently called Trump's voters garbage. The Republican appeared in a garbage truck and spoke at a rally in a reflective vest. The latest polls give Trump the lead in five of seven key states, Nevada, Arizona, Georgia, Pennsylvania, and North Carolina. There is a tie in Michigan and Wisconsin. Wisconsin voters insist on being unpredictable. And so we've got right now a race for president that's maybe 48-48. But actually that means that there are 2% of Wisconsinites who haven't decided who they want to vote for. Kamala Harris is confident that a win will be secured by her existing strategy. The Democrat is betting on the rights of immigrants, minorities, and women. Donald Trump trying to keep us divided and afraid of each other. We're done with that. We're done. Kamala Harris was supported by singer Jennifer Lopez. <laughs> Donald Trump is backed by billionaire and inventor Elon Musk. How will it all end? We don't know yet, but we invite you to Republica for a special broadcast. On election day, we will show you how Americans vote and comment on the results. One studio in the United States, the other in Warsaw. Our journalists will be reporting from Washington, D.C. and New York. We will be with you around the clock. On November 5th at 7 p.m. local time, Republica Television will kick off our special edition election night broadcast dedicated to the elections in the United States. You are most cordially invited. There will certainly be a lot going on. The final hours of the campaign and the course of the vote will be commented on by Republica's chairman, Tomasz Sakiewicz, and program director, Michał Rahoń, among others. All the while, our cooperation with the American Associated Press, one of the world's largest press agencies will give us, as the only Polish TV station, access to a unique database showing the voting in real time. This will be Republika's largest broadcast to date, so it's worth being part of that history.